boys and girls, and welcome to Faith Flight School, where we learn about the Word of God and how to be doers of it. As we're doers of God's Word, as we do what He shows us, we will receive all the benefits that He has already prepared for us. Well, we just recently finished our Precious in His Sight series, but for today's lesson, we've compiled a bunch of parts of all those lessons so that we can review. But before we get started, let's head to the hangar for some praise and worship. All right, I have a very important question for you guys. And thankfully, you have a little bit of help. So listen really closely to see what the answer is going to be, okay? Whose report will you believe? Of course. 
opened your heart, you are now free. Can you say, I'm free in him? Say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Let's sing even more about it. I'm free, free, free. I'm free, free, free. The sun has set me free.
Hey kids, it's offering time. Have you heard the story of David's offering for the temple? It's in the Old Testament found in 1 Chronicles. David wanted to build a temple to God, a brand new temple, shiny, uh, fancy. But God said, no, your son Solomon is gonna build the temple for me. But David had so much love in his heart for God that he still wanted to help. So he decided to give an offering towards the temple instead. And did he give an offering? He gave, the Bible says he gave 3,000 talents of gold. In today's standards, one talent of gold is over a million. So then that means that he gave 3,000, that's $300 billion in gold. And not only that, he gave over twice as much silver. And then after that, he looked to his friends and said, you get in on this too. And then they gave even more than David gave towards the temple altogether. So then it showed what was in David's heart and what he put his money towards. What are some things that we have in our hearts? Well, when we receive money, maybe we need some new equi sports equipment. Maybe we really like sports. We need new football, new basketball, some new cleats, new uniform, or maybe sports aren't our thing. Maybe there's a new video game that came out. Maybe you wanna get that, or maybe just buy a new TV, the new gaming system, or perhaps not sports, not video games, but maybe it's candy. Maybe we want some gummies, some chocolate, some lollipops. Maybe that's what we're thinking. Or just maybe God is the first thing we think about. Let's grab our manuals and turn to the book of Matthew. That's the first book in the New Testament. In chapter six and verse 21, it says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. A treasure or our money shows what is in our heart. The first thing we think about, the first thing that we put our money or treasure towards shows what's first place in our heart. If we continually put God first place in our heart, then that shows that we love him. All right, guys, it's my favorite time and your favorite time. It's confession time. Are you ready? Yay. I brought my friend here. Are you ready? Yep, I'm okay. ready. All right, here we go. Say it after me. I am. I am. The righteousness. The righteousness. Of God in Christ. Of God in Christ. Okay, now we got to get our actions ready. You got, are you ready? You all uh, warmed up? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, all right. So I'm, I'm quick. quick. I'm, I'm sharp. sharp. I'm bright. bright. Good looking. Good -looking. Very rich and, and a major blessing. blessing. All right, great job, guys. Good job. So now we got to get our doers out. Say, I'm a doer. I'm, I'm a, a doer. doer. I'm, I'm a doer of the word of God. God. Great job. Now we need our manuals. Do you have your manual? I'll be right back. Okay. All right, guys, go grab your manuals. Got to have them ready. Okay, you ready? It's one of my favorite ones. The word of God is so powerful. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm back, I'm back. Oh, phew, I must have been hiding under something. Okay, here we go. Ready? Yep. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can do what God says I can do. I can be what God says I can be. I can be what God says I can be. Great job, guys. Hey, kids. Do you know where we find our identity? That's right, we find our identity in Christ. Miss Hannah. Hi. Do you know who I am? Boys and girls, do you know who he is? That's right, this is Tom Teller. <laughs> hmm, hold that thought. Wonder where he went. Okay, oh. now who am I? Tom Teller. 
Hmm. Hmm. Oh, you're back. <laughs> but do you know who I am now? Tom Keller. <laughs> hmm. That's right. So what about now? Tom. How about now? Tom. Yeehaw! And what about now? <laughs> Tom. Hmm. But what about now? You're still Tom. <laughs> Tom, no matter what hat you put on, you're still going to be who God made you to be. That's exactly right, Miss Hannah. This hat, Wait a those costumes, didn't change me at all. Tom. I was always Tom all along. <laughs> you were playing with me, weren't you? Just a little bit. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you know that. I know, it's good to know who we are. And you know, who we really are is who we are in Christ. That's exactly right. That's exactly where we find our identity. Yes. You know, we find our identity in what God has done for us, mm -hmm. that we're his sons and his daughters. We're sons and daughters of the Most High God! That's exactly right! And He made us valuable and precious in His sight. Yes, that is who we are. Right, so we're valuable. We are? We are! We're the most valuable and precious thing to God. Wow. In fact, it says that we are His treasure. His treasure? Treasure. You know, I have a treasure. You you have a treasure? Yes, I have a treasure. Wow. You know, I was out with my grandpa one day. We were fishing mm -hmm. and there was this big rock in the creek bed and he picked it up and he put it in his backpack. And yep. when we got back to the house, he took a hammer and he cracked it open. And do you know what was in it? I, I have no idea. Do you guys know what was in it? They don't have a idea. You don't have any idea out there? Okay, well, it was a geode. Oh, those are beautiful. Yes, it was blue and it was crystally and it was very sparkly and it was so cool. And you know what, my grandpa, he gave me half of it. Wow, that's a great story. I mean, that does sound like a treasure. You had fun with your grandpa mm -hmm. and you have something cool to remember with. Yep. That's really cool. Yeah, and, and you know what? I keep it right next to my bedside so that I can see it every time I wake up and every time I go to bed. Now, you know, I noticed. Did you notice, boys and girls, when she was telling this story, she got really excited? And, and maybe a little happy? Did you notice that? It seems like this story makes you happy. It yes, reminds it makes you me of a good lot things. of, makes me very, very, very happy. Okay. Well, you know what? When, it made me think of a scripture because God thinks about us. Really? And it tells us the kinds of thoughts he thinks. Do you want to hear? Yes. yes. Okay. So it's in Jeremiah 29, 11, And it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Wow. Yeah. So when you think about, you've got your geo that reminds you of the fun time you had with your grandpa and how much, you know, how exciting it was to find this geo. Mm -hmm. God, when he sees you, he has all these great things that he thinks about you. He does? He has a good plan for you, and he is thinking good things about you. In fact, and it makes him happy. It does? Yeah, and I have something that makes me happy. You want to see it? Yes, yes, I want to see it. See, this is my smiley face. <gasps> these kind of smiley so faces cute. make me so happy because they make me smile. And God smiles like this every time that he thinks about you. You he know, does? It, the Bible tells us that we are the apple of his eye. Wow. That's pretty special. His love is deeper than the ocean. <gasps> it's higher than the mountains. And it never fails. Never? Never. That is a lot of love. It's a lot of love. Hey, kids. Captain Tyler said he had a challenge for me today. Wow. Look at what we have here. We have some bowls. We have eggs inside the bowls, have some utensils here. He asked me to remove the yolk from these eggs. I think I'm going to need your help here. This looks like a tough challenge. All right, so we have a spoon, a fork, and a cup. What do you want to start with first? The fork? All right, let's do it. Okay, so we got to get the yolk out of the bowl and put it on the plate. Let's see here. 
Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is not working. Oh, what a mess. Okay. The fork is not the best utensil to use. All right, let's try again. All right, we have a spoon and we have a cup. Which one should we try? The cup? Okay, let's try the cup. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna try to tilt this and get it in the, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> that did not work either. Okay. You know what? I think I know why Captain Tyler asked me to do this. Let's open up our manuals and we're going to go to the book of Revelation. Now that's in the New Testament all the way at the end of the Bible here. And we're going to look at verse 5 and 6 in chapter 1. It says, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests, to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It says, Who loved us and washed us of our sins by His blood. Now we've been talking about the redeeming blood of Jesus. And if we imagine that these eggs are us and the yolk is our sin, well there's really only one way to remove the sin from us, right? What is it? The precious blood of Jesus. Just like these two bowls where we tried to get the yolk out, we can't do it ourselves. We need the precious blood of Jesus. So, let's say that this is the precious blood of Jesus, and this yolk is our sin. Just like that. Wow. Our sin is removed. It says that Jesus' blood redeemed us of all of our sin. Not just some of it, all of it. You are so precious that God gave Jesus to redeem us of our sins because He loves us so, so much. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed church today as much as I did. You know, these are precious times that we can come and be in the presence of God and learn about all the amazing things that He did for us. You know, one of the most important things you could ever learn is how valuable you are to God. That He sent the most precious thing that He had to this earth. He sent Jesus. And He died on that cross for you and for me to take away all of our sins. He gave His precious blood because we are so precious to Him. You know, when I was a little boy, I gave my heart to Jesus. Somebody gave me an opportunity to do that just like I am today. And I want you to give your heart to Him. And He'll take it, He'll make it brand new, and He'll make you into something great for Him. Something for His glory. You are so precious to Him. So if you want to give your heart and your life to Him, say this prayer after me, and you'll be born again. Say this. Say, Father God, I believe in You. I believe that You sent Your Son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I believe Jesus rose again, and He's alive right now. Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord. If you said that prayer, you have been born again. You are so precious to Him. He's got a great plan for you. What a great lesson. 
It is so good to remind ourselves that we are precious in God's sight. When we receive what Jesus did for us, we become born again and we are made complete in Him. I encourage you, remind yourself that you are a child of God all throughout this week. No matter what situations or circumstances come your way, God wants you to overcome. And you can use the confessions that we've learned and that we've heard during this series anytime. Say them out loud, say them quietly to yourself. It doesn't matter, but remind yourself of these truths that we've learned in this series. And as you do, you'll become rooted and grounded and you'll grow up and you'll be confident that you are complete in Him. I encourage you, join us next week. Until then, I'm Captain Tyler, and I'll see you next time.